Hello audio geeks, it's James Arter here. I hope you're doing really well. So today I wanted to talk about editing multi-track drums with Logic Pro X using flex time. I think if you really know how to use this and you use it sparingly, it can get fantastic results. So stick around, I'll show you what I do. If you do end up liking a video, please hit the like, it is really useful. Also, if you wanna subscribe, hit subscribe and the notification bell and I'll let you know of upcoming videos. Also, if you sign up to the main list below, I'll send you some free stuff and some free tips that you can use to help your mixes. Okay, so we've got our drums here. Now, what I'm gonna presume firstly is that you've done all of your comping already. As you'll notice with mine, for example, I've used lots of different takes to get the perfect comp. And now I'm happy with that performance. I just need to tighten it up. So that is the point of this video. I'm not going through all the comping in this one, but once you're ready to go, make sure it's all flattened and merged as one nice, clean, continuous file with no edits. What I'll generally do at this point is save a track alternative, usually named original, just so I know that that's where I did all of my edits and I can always go back to it, duplicate that, call it something else, Let, let's call it flat because now I'm gonna be flattening the audio takes and then click over here and make sure we're flattened and merged. Once that's all ready to go, I usually just create another track alternative. So I'm just working on something slightly different. So duplicate that, let's call this flex. Okay, now we're in a good position to get started. Now, one thing that's very important and I'll presume that you would have done this already if you've been doing your comping correctly is just make sure that all of the drum tracks are in the same group. To do that, just select them all, Go up to this little bit here and you'll be selecting a new group. I've already got one, so I've got mine here called drums. And if we just open the settings there, you just want to make sure this is super, super important that you've got these two settings enabled as well. So editing and quantized locked audio. That just basically means that if you make any changes on any of the tracks, that will follow suit to every other one. And it keeps everything perfectly in sync and phase locked, which is which really is what you need, especially when you've got multiple microphones all on the same source. Okay, so now what you wanna do is, before we actually get to the editing, we need to choose which tracks are gonna be the cue reference. Now the cue reference is basically a way of choosing choosing which parts of all of your drum kit are the most important ones, which ones are gonna be controlling the timing the most. Nine times out of 10, it's gonna be the kick and snare because they're the ones which hold the backbeat and they're doing the most work in time in terms of time and control. So over here, we wanna go over to the channel and just turn off the Q button on everything apart from the kick and the snare. If you've got multiple kick and snare tracks like I do, I've got a kick in and kick out and then I've got three snare tracks there just pick one of each so usually i'd go for the kick in because that's the closest to the beta and it's going to be the most accurate and then one of the top snare mic so i chose snare one makes sense now this is going to be really important when it starts to choose the, the flex markers and it doesn't mean that it's not going to pay any attention to any other tracks it doesn't mean that it's going to miss the transients of your of your toms or your overheads and whatnot but it just means that it's got a focus on these two so once you've done that you're already heading in the right direction now next Next up, we want to just narrow this down and get it a little bit more accurate. So turn off the group for a moment. You can either go over to the inspector if you've got that loaded up and just switch it off, as you can see, or go over to the group setting. You can open that up and just turn it off there. It does exactly the same thing. Okay, and now that we're off, we'll just look at the kick drum. So the kick in, the one that you're using for one of your cue references. Double click that and then just make sure on this setting here, you're over to file. So now we're actually just looking at that file itself. So then we're gonna go over to audio file, detect transients. Now, as you can see, it's gonna throw up all of these flex markers. And what it's intentionally trying to do is pick out all of the transients, which are hopefully all of the kick drums. Now, yes, it has got all of those, but as you'll notice, there's a whole bunch in here that aren't kick drum. So what it's best to do is just take away the ones which aren't relevant to the kick drum and it's just gonna make things much more accurate. So go up here and you can just hit the plus or minus. In this case, minus, we've got too many and you'll notice a bunch of them start to drop away. Now, as we have a look through, that looks much better. There might be the odd one that's a little bit wrong, but most of it is pretty accurate and it's, and it's getting all of your kick drums. Beautiful. Now to get that much more accurate, and if you wanna really do it right, then this is really highly recommended that you do, is zoom in and just have a look at each one and see if they're all in the right place. In fact, this, this fella here, 
that isn't a kick drum. So that one can come out. So you might as well get rid of that. Just double click it and it's gone. I've actually got a few more in here. That one can go. So I, I missed some, but I would suggest that you go through just a little bit more accurately. In fact, yeah, I've got another one there. Cool. I've missed a whole bunch, but you get the idea. And then go through the whole track. Make sure you've got nothing in there that you don't need. And also, if we zoom in, we'll notice that sometimes Logic gets it just a little bit wrong. See here, this, this marker should be at the start of the zero cross in there. So it's going a little bit late. So what you want to do is move that. If you just go to edit and just make sure you've got snap edits to zero crossings on, when you click it, it should adjust it to a better position. There we go. As you can see, so that is much, much tighter and you're going to get a much better edit now. So that there will be a bunch that are like that. So I recommend going through and getting those bang on. The results afterwards are going to be so much better. Okay, so once you've done that, it's recommended that you do the snare as well. You don't have to, but again, you're going to get more accurate results if you do. So the, the process is exactly the same. Go into the snare track, make sure you're on file, and then audio file, detect transients. And we've got a whole bunch in there that we do not need. Let's just sack a bunch of those off till it looks a little bit cleaner. Yeah, that's a lot better already. And then do the same just to double check that everything is hitting in the right place. There's a few here that are wrong. Cool, I'm gonna get rid of that, get rid of that. Now they are actually snare hits, but they're they're very small ones. So I'd be tempted to leave that because it's it looks like it's a little bit more of a fill. So you might process those a little bit differently and I'll show you that when we get to it. Right, so let's imagine that you've gone through that whole thing. Now it's time to turn on the flex in. So before we do, make sure that our group is back on. So we're editing everything at the same time. Super, super important. And now you wanna choose the flex mode. So go over to here, over to inspector. You can do this on, on any of the tracks, but I just happen to be doing it on the kick and I just stick to the kick because it's just, it's just a simple and consistent way of working. So flex mode, we wanna turn that to slice in. This is pretty much the only one you wanna use for editing drums, so hit that. Give it a minute, it's gonna do its thing. And now you're basically ready to start editing. As a rule of thumb, and just to make things a little bit easier to, to manage, I usually will move the main tracks that I'm using to the top. So kick in, snare one, and often a good one to, to have following that will be the toms because that's where you're gonna get most editing action from your fills and whatnot. Just means that you're not looking at too much and you're quite focused on what you're about to edit. Now, if you're working with a really good drummer, I happen to be, on this occasion, I'm working with a session drummer called Adam Faulkner and he's a fantastic drummer. He's very much used to playing to click. So the work I have to do on the drums is very minimal. It's just tidy and tidying it up here and there. So if you're working with someone who's who's pretty on the beat, then a very quick way to, to get the wheels in motion is to just highlight the whole thing and hit quantize. Now, I know it sounds like a dangerous way of working, but it can work. This is just one way of doing it. And you're, you're essentially working by allowing Logic to throw in a load of flex markers and then what you do is you essentially chip away and take away the ones that you don't need. So what I'd, I'm I'm pretty pretty confident that this this one was a good take. So I've got all of these regions highlighted. I'm going to choose a quantize up here. It's best to go for whatever suits your track really, but hit the what's going to be the highest value, the the fastest movement they're going to be making. So I'm going to go sixteenth note at the moment. And now let's go into the actual flex view. If you just do Apple and F. And as you can see, we've got all of these markers in, doing pretty well to pick out all of the main bits. And it's doing well at that because I did the detect transients at the beginning. If you don't do this, then essentially it's gonna definitely throw up a whole load more markers than you don't need. So when you get to this stage and you're doing a quantizing, you're gonna be chipping away even more. Like I said, yes, we'll be chipping away as we're going, but you're gonna be doing that much more and it's just gonna take so much longer. So as we can see, these are all pretty tight already. sounds wonderful i mean he's a great drummer anyway so it makes my life about billion times easier but if we just go and look at some fills we'll see this is where some of the work will come in now this one for example a very simple fill and it's done very well at keeping everything in time without adding any artifacts at all so that's yeah so that's done a good job but if we needed to move anything it's really easy to do so all these flex markers are 
ready to be moved around, but you don't want to be moving around too much. As soon as you get into that territory, that's when you're going to start to hear the artifact. So for example, to move each flex marker, you just pull it from the top there and it'll be moving that marker and you'll see the waveform go with it. Obviously now you're hearing the artifacts because it's stretching the audio and not really sounding right. But you don't want to be doing that anyway, because that's totally wrong. But these over here, say we wanted to make sure they were totally in. It actually looks like they're good anyway, but you could see this one here is a little bit off the grid. Personally, I would just leave that because we want to try and keep things human. We want to still keep the feel of the playing. But if you want to get them in, especially if you're doing really tight metal or something like that, then you might want to get it locked into the grid. So you can just easily just add in a marker. As you see, this little cursor changes. Chuck one in there and then you can move that around and snap it to the grid. Beautiful. But if you noticed when I did that, this one just behind it, that moved as well. And a problem with that is it means that it, yeah, although we've put Tom 2 in time, we've now moved Tom 1 a little bit early. So that's a little bit out of time. So let's get rid of that marker. You can just click the cross or you can double click it and it goes. The other option here is if you click the three little arrows there, as it appears, you'll notice how it's different. Then it should grab one of the transients either side as well, just to anchor it. It hasn't in this case, so just make sure that that's selected. And then what that means is when you now move this, that's gonna go in time and it's not gonna to touch the previous one. It's not gonna move that audio. Now we'll see that. Great. But if we go, let's go and find one which has an issue. So like this over here, because we've just hit quantize before, it's grabbed the transient and it's tried to move it in, in time to where it thinks it should be. Let's have a look at that. You can hear that artifact. So if that happens, let's just look at what's going wrong here. It's gonna be this snare. So let's double click it and get rid of it. You see it snaps to where it was originally. Let's check that out. See that, that's much better already. But what I would do is if there's any sort of feel like this where it's that much busier, then I'd try to use as little flex markers as possible because the less you're processing it, the less it's gonna sound processed. Most of the time, the best thing to do will be try and get the, the kick at the start of the fill, if that's the case, in time, and maybe the one that's at, at the end of the bar as well, just to kind of bookend that bar and then just leave what's going on in the middle as much as you can. So let's take these, all of these out in fact, from in between this fill. So now I'm not, essentially I'm not processing, so essentially I'm not processing any of that. And then see if we can get away with it. Yeah. Great, so that didn't really need any moving around at all. I just needed to make sure it was okay either side and then the rest of it could be left untouched. And that is generally the rule of thumb with all of this. So you need to go through and find out what else you can take away. Wh which other flex markers do you not need? It can especially be the case if you're editing something which is just after a, a kick drum with a cymbal. So if there's, if there's a crash right up alongside the, the kick drum and then there's something else happening just after that, then a flex marker can essentially take control of, of that symbol a little bit and it can make it dip and it can kind of swirl it around a little bit and that's when you're going to hear the artifacts. So you want to do your best to just get rid of as much as you can really. So then you just want to carry on like that and keep going until you've essentially edited the whole lot. And that's pretty much it. So just to recap, some of the most important things you need to do once you've set your cue references is go into those tracks. It would most likely be the kick and the snare. Go into them, detect the transients and make sure that it's picking up on everything that is relevant and also that it's not picking up anything that's not. And then spending the time to actually make sure that the zero crossings are in the right place, that it's actually putting the markers in the right place, that is what's going to make a huge difference to your editing. So where you saw that I reached right for the quantize, you can get away with that to a degree if you've put the work in before. And remember, you can still just take quantize off and you can change things as you're going. 
And as you notice, when I got to a fill where it didn't quite work, you just move around the flex markers. You get rid of what you don't need. And the main thing here is to try and end up with as little flex markers as possible. Doesn't mean that you can't have a few in each bar. It just means that ensure that the ones that are in there are actually doing something. Sometimes it's nice to leave some of them out and, and have a snare which is a little bit behind the beat because it's going to give it a little bit more groove. It's going to sound more human and it's going to enable the original performance to come through. So just use your judgment, use your ears. And if it's starting to sound a little bit like you're hearing artifacts, like it's getting a bit warped and moving around, get rid of the markers because you never know, it might have been fine at the beginning. You might just need an anchor at the beginning and the end of the fill and then everything that's in between is good to go. Doing it in this way will end up with you not hearing artifacts. It will not sound like you've edited the drums. It will just sound like it was a tight performance. But like I said before, I'm working with a good drummer here. If you've got someone who's very new to it and isn't as good at staying on the beat and there's a lot more work that needs to be done, flex time won't always cut it. It does a great job, but it's not magic. So that's it for now. I hope that was of use to you. Feel free to leave any comments in the comment section below and we can start a little bit of a dialogue about it. Okay, thanks very much for watching. I'll see you next time. Yeah.